As temperatures around the world continue to rise, the threat of rising seas worsens for South Florida. The World Bank had declared Miami as the second most at risk in terms of assets at risk of location in the world. David McDougall is part of the Miami Climate Alliance, a group of 80 organizations working to address the climate crisis. Ocean levels are up four inches since 1994 and rates of increase are continuing to accelerate. The latest assessment from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change projects the minimum sea level rise around the globe will be between 11 inches and two feet by the end of the century. Miami sees these effects more frequently in the form of king tides or sunny day flooding. These problems will worsen as will the costs to address them, costs that are staggering. Just for seawalls alone across the country, it's $400 billion over the next 15 years. For Florida alone, it's $76 billion. That estimate is from a recent study conducted by the Center for Climate Integrity, a research group of engineers specializing in climate adaptation and geographers from the University of Colorado using data from NOAA. Florida is the costliest state, nearly double any other in the contiguous 48. The Keys are especially of concern. Their congressional district would be the 10th costliest in the country. What's more troubling is that these estimates are calculated using conservative figures, and seawalls account for just 15% of the total adaptation cost. But our entire operating budget for the state of Florida this year is $91 billion. So where does that money come from? The taxpayers alone can't shoulder this, so we need, we need to figure out who is going to pay and, and how that's going to happen. We need to make a, a sort of concerted effort to understand the enormity of the challenge and how we need to push for the big decision points. Frances Colon is part of the Miami Sea Level Rise Committee. She's a scientist who worked in the U.S. State Department for 10 years under two presidents. We know that the impacts are coming pretty fast and we know that the research work needs to be done. Um, but I think what our volunteer board, the Sea Level Rise Committee, hopes is that we can move faster on these things and that we can figure out where the resources are going to come from because the truth is that the price tag is going to be pretty high. Cologne and the Miami Climate Alliance are also trying to ensure that climate adaptation considers all of the county's citizens. The budget right now will not be able to do everything. So how are we going to prioritize the measures that are going to protect the most vulnerable while also looking at protecting assets that we need to protect along the coast and do it the right way. The longer term problem is the one that we're, we're in the process of uh, evaluating and studying and we'll have a report at the end of the year on, on sea level rise strategies that we will propose back to the mayor and the commission for their consideration. Jim Murley is the chief resiliency officer for Miami-Dade County. His job is to assess the impact of a changing climate on the county's vulnerable areas. He's confident the challenge of sea level rise can be met with innovation. The people that came before us learned how to manage the water, they raised the land, and they kept at it. We need to start on that base, understand the, you know, what worked and what didn't, and build on that because it is a day-to-day, year-to-year, decade-to-decade business. Miami voters have already approved $192 million in climate adaptation through the Miami Forever Bond. After a lot of organizing, a lot of pressure, there now is $600 million in every annual operating budget to address um, resilience in the county and $16 billion in the capital plan, that's the five-year plan for the county, to address sea level rise related infrastructure projects. Miami Beach and some parts of Broward and Palm Beach have seawall projects in place, but because of the porous limestone foundation underground, seawalls can only do so much. Groundwater is a key to this. You know, we, we live on a sponge. Salt water tends to be heavier and will push the fresh water that's below us in the aquifer up and as it comes up, it leaves less room for uh, stormwater. Other projects like stormwater pumps and elevating buildings and roads are also underway. Septic tanks and inland waterways will also have to be addressed. These measures are near-term fixes, but the root cause needs to be addressed as well. We need to make our elected officials conscious that they need to start putting a price tag on carbon that we need to have better um, energy standards, clean energy standards. As more and more carbon is pumped into our atmosphere by the burning of fossil fuels, temperatures in the air and in the water increase. Warmer oceans cause seawater to expand, causing half of the rise. A hotter planet also results in melting glaciers and ice sheets, accounting for the other half. When the ice that's on top of Greenland and Antarctica melts, it changes the volume of the water in the ocean. So that's the 
game changer that we're all uh, observing. The Miami Climate Alliance and other advocacy groups want the fossil fuel industry to help finance sea level rise adaptation costs. They argue those companies should be required to pay their fair share for knowingly contributing to the greenhouse gas problem. So the fossil fuel industry needs to be held accountable and they need to pitch in financially to help us solve this problem and give us solutions. The undeterminable price tag is the biggest obstacle the committee is facing. It'll be billions, but it won't be all one year. Future budgets are going to have to address this. You have to start looking at investments that you hopefully can partner with the state and federal government. We as government need to engage the, the large uh, foundational institutions and make them equal partners with us. We need them to invest in their own resources because we all have the same threats, the same vulnerabilities, and we, we share the, the fact that we may have these losses if we don't if we don't move forward. And you just have to up your ante. I see glimmers of hope. I know that the people are aware and that they're conscious. There's no alternative for the public government and the cities not to try uh, to do this. This is the basic quality of life of our community. We have 12 years before we are going to have impacts on us that it might be irreversible. We need action now. We have no time to waste. It is time to move.